dun, dun, dun. All right, all right, we're live here. Welcome mm-hmm. everybody to the CNC with Dave show. Um, we are going to do a question and answer again tonight. We have a bunch, and I do mean a bunch of new folks uh, that are. Uh, either about to get a Gatton CNC kit in the mail or by UPS rather, or have gotten one. Um, so, uh, thought it'd be another good night to do a question and answer. I see a ton of questions on the Facebook stuff mm-hmm. and, uh, thought we'd, uh, just see what kind of questions folks, uh, might have um let's see here or you got a big pile of folks over there (laughs) i was laughing because frankie says hey ask dave about feeds and speeds and if a garage works can handle a 2.4 kilowatt spindle he loves that (laughs) yeah yeah frankie just uh frankie just so you know the Streamyard <laughs> platform I use has now added a feature where I can uh, put you in timeout or uh, <laughs> kick you out straight from Streamyard. So just so you know that, <laughs> I want to keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, okay, well, ah. I guess the uh, first thing I want to do before we get started on questions, because I'm sure we're going to have a ton of them tonight. Yeah. Uh, I do want to remind folks, I see Miter Mike's trying to sneak in here, I think. There you go. There we go. Um, I do want to remind everybody that right now going on, we have the Gatton CNC Christmas Challenge. Again, if you don't know what the heck that is, it is a challenge that is specifically for us CNC guys and gals. Normally, all these different woodworking challenges, they uh, they either frown on CNC stuff or they just flat out tell you it's not allowed. Most of them just say you can't use the CNC. So this is a challenge I created this uh, three or four years ago. This is the fourth fourth one we've done. And uh, the purpose of it is to get out in your shop, use your CNC, uh, whether it be a CNC router or laser even a 3d printer Uh, i think one guy asked about a plasma you know as long as it's a cnc controlled machine to make a christmas themed project that's why it's called the christmas challenge your project has to have a christmas theme to it it can be like some reindeer for your yard or uh, santa claus that you want to put on your roof or Christmas tree ornaments to put on your tree or what have you. Yep. Um, there's all kinds of different stuff. Um, there's playlists for, you know, we started it. I think the first one was 2016. So there's playlists for that year, 2017, 2018. And there's also a playlist that I've started so far this year. Uh, right now we've only got four entries, but it's still early. Uh, we're only into the first week. So, um, get out there and, and shoot a short video, 10 minutes or less. Um, all the details of it are over on the website at, oh, I guess I don't have one on here. Dave Gatton.com. Well, this one. And you can also check out the Gatton CNC one <laughs> from there since that's what's on that banner. Mm. But, uh, but yeah, the deadline is, um, by the stroke of midnight, Christmas Eve. Just for Santa Claus gets there and uh, make sure you send the link to me. And again, all the stuff is on the website on how to, how to do all that. All right. Let me get back over here to the comments. We've got a gazillion of them over here. I'm not even going to try to do shout outs tonight. I, um, Cause I got, I got the first one here from uh, Jay fabrications. He was thinking of asking how to protect plywood when milling metals from lubrication. <laughs> Well, uh, don't use plywood. <laughs> yeah. uh, is you know, there's, there's, you know, unless you have some kind of pan or stuff, but, but even then, you know, plywood machines aren't made for, um, for milling metals. metal. Yeah. Now, you know, if you, you know, and I've cut aluminum stuff like. There's a lot of stuff you can cut. The softer metals, brass and 
aluminum stuff and you don't really need a lubrication right uh, you can just use some air to keep the chips blowed out uh, and stuff like that uh, yeah, yeah or, you or use if yeah you're curious it, about mill, milling metal you need to buy a mill and not a not a wooden cnc router okay and that, let's see, J Fabrications, is that Johnny? That's not Johnny, because he's a yeah, J5. John, oh, okay, that's right. I thought it was, uh, yeah. Uh, I think in that J5. I don't be. know. I, I don't think, I, I was thinking, at first I thought it was Johnny, and then I'm thinking, no, maybe it's Johnny. All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, 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 he was just kidding, by the way. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh, Joe Lidden was asking uh, about the uh, where the list of parts uh, are. That's uh, page one, Joe. Okay, now we're. I want to kind of flash these questions up. So let me. Oh yeah, uh, it's. Um, okay, here we go. Got it. There you go. Okay, I'm, I, we're gonna. This is a good one to start with, I guess, because I've got I've got a set of plans printed out right in front of me here, and I don't know why everybody's having trouble saying. I, I cannot find a list of parts and links to the source. First of all, Joe, if you're looking at the plans on your computer using an Adobe Reader, um, if you hover over where it says McMaster Car, that is a live link. You can click on that and it takes you right there, as well as some others through, scattered throughout the plans. You know. Mm -hmm. That's how, that's how you see the links. They're, it's, they're not just, here's a link and you have to type it in. It's, if you're looking at it in an in a Adobe Acrobat or a, an Adobe Reader, which or whatever reads a PDF file, it'll, it'll be a live link. You click right on it. Um, I think, too, Dave, isn't it a color? It's blue. It, it, it's highlighted the links, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so. I think it is. Now, I look. It depends Today, on your reader, but yes. It depends. Yeah, because I was using an older Adobe Reader because I don't have Adobe Acrobat. And when you hover over the McMaster car, you know, you got the little arrow for your mouse. But as soon as you hover over, that arrow turns into the finger to let you know it's a, a clickable link. And I clicked and it took you it took me straight to McMaster car. So all those links work. Um they're not hidden. They're right out there in plain sight. You just gotta, you just gotta click on them. Uh, so, all right, let's see. And uh, the next one down. Uh, Steve, is it Steven? This one here. Yeah. Okay. We'll try to go. We'll try to go straight down. Just, just tell me who who it is, and I'll find them. Hobbin. We you, can you got it. Question up here. Uh, Steven Toronto. New to your channel, been around here last week or so watching some of your videos. Some of your videos I saw you offered plans only without a kit. Is that still the case? No, I quit. I quit doing that for a lot of different reasons. Uh, but uh, well, I'm just gonna leave it at that. I just quit. I just quit doing it. So I only offer the plans with with the kit. So yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I remember that. There were too many people building them and then complaining that their that their uh, pieces were were th that their that their machine was was off, and it's because it, the the, uh, the quality wasn't there because they didn't use a gat in the building. <laughs> uh, yeah, that well, that's that's one of the mar you know, margin of error is a lot bigger because you're doing it manually, not the yeah. machine. Well, yeah, but then there were some guys that were using a CNC to cut it out, but they're using like an X carve or, or a Shapoko or Shapoko something or something like that, and then complain that you know it's not as accurate as their other one. I'm like, well, you just use my files to cut out on your machine. So, so now we're going to rule all that out, and you just <laughs> get the parts kit now, or you don't get one. Period. Yep. Leo's got yeah, it works much better that way because it you know, consistency's there. Uh, Leo Steger's asking about the thoughts on a one one and an eighth inch MDF uh, as a top to build from. Uh, All just, right, I'm trying to find uh, it. Yeah, keep scrolling down. It's just above your where are you watching from? Uh, okay, quote. there you go. What are your thoughts on one and an eighth MDF? 
as a top. Are you? T I guess is he talking about a table surface? Is that is that what you mean, Leo? Uh, well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mount my rails to that. No, no. Yeah, if you're going to use T, I think to me, I think the perfect thing. Uh, now, the reason the design calls for just drilling holes and putting the T nuts on the underside is because that's probably the absolute dirt cheapest way you can get some initial hold downs. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's about as cheap as you can get. But I have since changed all of my machines where I use the plywood, the, the three quarter birch plywood as the first layer. And then I cut strips of MDF and put T track and then MDF. And of course the MDF has got the little, uh, uh, what is it? Dado or, um, yeah. Yeah. Where it's, where it's kind of holding the, the T track down. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's funny. And it, this I'll, I'll, I'll say as a, as a, as a message to all your, your, uh, audience, I've been getting a, a number of questions on why not this and why this and why the 99 times out of a hundred, the answer is because it would cost more. And and this is about building a budget CNC, a low cost that's 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 stronger than a toy CNC that you see out there that's as durable as 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 one of the big ones. But at a yeah, low think, cost, you can do anything. I think a lot of that gets lost because the the Gat CNC kit has gotten so popular now and so many people are building these big monstrous CNC's and, and, you know, and then, it, and so now people are going, well, why didn't he use this? This would have been better. Well, yeah, I could have, but the whole idea is to make something that's easy to build, very inexpensive so that people that wouldn't otherwise been able to afford a CNC can get started in it. this. Isn't a, a, a CNC that you, you build. And I mean, it might be one that you have, the rest of your life, but it's, but it's also kind of like a stepping stone yeah. into something else. You can buy one of these, build it and, and learn that. all about CNC and you haven't laid out a big thing of money. And if yeah. all you're doing is using it for a hobby and it spills your needs, that's great. If you want to move on to something bigger and better, and now you've got experience and you're not going to crash some expensive CNC. There you go. You're uh, you're all set. There's, you know, there's been a, a few folks I know, I, I'm not going to mention their name because I don't know if they would want me to or not, but there's been some folks that have started out, got a GAT CNC, built it, and created such a, a, a good little small business selling stuff mm -hmm. that they have what I call graduated to much nicer machines. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, that doesn't hurt my feelings at all. I'm just happy to uh, have played a small part into getting somebody who had never run a CNC before, didn't know anything about it, you know, get them a kit and, yeah. and you know, get them where they can, you know, join this community and they can learn and then move yeah. on to bigger and better things. That's, that's been, in fact, one of the people, the one I'm, the main one I'm thinking about still has their GAT and CNC. They're using it for other things and using a newer machine. Uh, Carlo, I guess is our money maker. So, yeah, I, I, it's it's funny. I I always look at the CNCs. I mean, being in the business for for a while, and uh, knowing about, uh, uh, all about CNCs for for studying them quite a while, I see them. I divide them into sort of three levels, really. Uh, basically, two levels. You've got the well, three. You've got the what I would call the toy CNCs, and I, I don't want to name names, but you know who you are. They're, they're little CNCs that hold the, the, the little Dremel tools and stuff. They're the cheap Chinese ones. Uh, and yeah, you could save uh, a couple hundred bucks by buying one of those on eBay, but you're never going to get a perfect circle. You're, not, you're, gonna, you're never going to get the speeds. They're good for what they are. And and they they'll they'll do very very small stuff. And then you've got the second level, the Gattons, and many 
higher cost CNCs that are that are comparable in quality, uh, and and the Gatton is and the do-it-yourself CNCs and the hobby CNCs, and then you've got I don't want to go into mills, but you've got the the higher quality industrial, you know, your cam masters, your Tormox, your all metal CNCs, which the end results will be the same. They're just a bit faster. They're not any more precise. They're just faster. Um, and, and that's questionable. But but uh, if you want to pay five or eight times, then and, and if you're running a business, that's for you. If you don't have the money and you don't care about quality, then buy one of the cheap ones. But, uh, you know, so many people are buying Gattons because they fall into that into that realm that, hey, I want to save some money and I want a good quality product. Is, I, I, Joe, are you still confused about the, the links? If you're, you know, the, 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 all the plans are PDF files. If you open them up with a, a PDF reader, there are live links in there. If you hover over the McMaster car, that's on several different pages. You George Rothfuss. It, it becomes George, a link. You click on it and it takes you straight to McMaster car. So George Rothfuss <laughs> has a similar question. He, he saw a PDF on the Gatton site about the parts list and approximate cost but cannot find it now. No, the, 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 only, the only links to the vendors are on the actual plans that, that, uh, that Dave will, will – well, uh, no. Well, there's the, links on the website. There's links on the websites to, to McMaster and, 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 and they change. I mean, they, they uh, uh, you know, let us know if, if uh, uh, bearings are not available or something and, and, and you know. Uh, yeah, let me, let me bring up a, a topic about the bearings too. There's a uh, a company that is still listed on the plans. I never have gone in there and taken them off. But this this person wanted to be um, he wanted to be my bearing guy because he knew I was building something where people were going to be buying a lot of bearings. And I told this guy uh, from the get go. I said, "Look, you want to be the bearing guy, and you want me to put." links and advertise for you on my website, you know, put links, take, you know, you got to give them a good price. You got to be the best deal in town. And he was for a little while, he put together a little Gatton kit where people could buy the 26 V group bearings and the four, uh, whatever that other bearing is, 16, 16, something. I forget what the number is. Uh, but then it wasn't long. I started getting emails from people saying, Hey, I went to that guy you you link and and you know you can get a whole lot cheaper here on on Amazon or whatever from some different companies. So I took the guy's link off of the website and I don't I no longer recommend him. The link is still on the plan, but for the more up to date information as far as links and products, you need to go to the website. Because they're, you know, the plan, I mean, I could go back and change the plans, but that's not going to help everybody that's already got them. So uh, uh, the uh, latest, uh, greatest information is always going to be on the website. Johnny is uh, is J Fabrications. He changed his name. Uh, it is Johnny for Brits. Oh, OK, OK. All right. And uh, Ale Eleven Atlantica has a question here. Uh, a few after the, the last question. Uh, asking about i was wondering about the height of a pre-cut gantry sides is the only thing besides a longer bit only preventing having a greater cutting depth yeah that that's been asked a few times i've got some comments but go where ahead is, dave where is that, where it's is that it's um uh, i wish they had a time stamp on this thing uh Oh, well, it, maybe it hadn't popped up yet. No, no, scroll all the way down, and it's about uh, the fifth one down at the top of the – from the top. Uh, uh, well, my page is <clears> – 11 <throat> Atlantica. It's uh, – it's, uh, I was wondering. Okay, he's here he's saying something uh, about Joe. Uh, before that, I believe – yeah. There's not, you, are you looking at the questions in I'm the look, yard? Uh, yes. There should be a timestamp on those. Uh, 
Hmm. Let me see if I stretch this out. I don't see it. Hang on. Well, I'm looking for that. I would suggest anybody that's going to build the the table and use the tea nuts. You got to be careful because if you go through your, <laughs> you have no spoil board. You're going to be drilling into your tabletop. It's so about it's I about ten or fifteen up from Joe Lid from the Joe Lidden one you just pulled up. So so it's before. At Lemon at Lemon Atlantica. It's uh, I was wondering. Um All right. Well, it, it, he was wondering about the height of the people. I'm not finding find these questions. Yeah, I, it, I like to flash them up here so everybody can see what we're talking about. Yeah. And even I can see what we're talking about, and I can't. It's 11 Atlantica, but you don't see a time stamp on the. It's, uh, Dave, it's uh, 8.10. 8, 10 p.m. Thanks. It's way up because we've got a ton of questions from there. Okay, is it this one? I don't know why I don't yes. show the. Oh, yeah. I was wondering, is the That's height it. of the pre-cut gantry sites the only thing besides a bit longer? The only thing... Okay, I found the timestamps. There we go. Having a greater cutting depth. Yeah, that's that's a big point of contention. You've got seven inches. Yeah, uh, and there's, there's adjustments. There's On the Z-Box, there's a different sets of holes, so you can set your Z lower or higher. Uh, what are you trying to do? Because uh, basically, I mean, the way I see it is you don't really need more than four inches. And the reason I say that is because most bits are two inches or less, and you need double the length of the bit. You know, just enough room to get the bit in and, and for it to go up and down, and, 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 and that's it. Anything past that. I mean, what are you trying to do? You can't carve yeah. deeper because the people, head will will bash into the the piece. I think a lot of people forget that just because you have a high gantry clearance, that just means you can stick something tall under there. You still yeah. can't go very deep into it, right? So, yeah, about the only useful thing is if you have a very uh, tall bowl, let's say, and you're just engraving the bottom of the bowl or or, or something like that, but. Uh, Drew Drew Oxford actually has. I'd, I'd also like to say that I've done some 3D carvings at two and a half inches, and mm -hmm. it, it works on the lowest level of the Z box. It, yeah. it, it's not. If you're cutting more than a couple of inches, you're going to have to have longer bits. Yeah, and exactly. and and anything anything past two or three inches, if you don't have a spindle, forget it. Uh, my friend Eloy had a three inch bit, and he just whang. It just bent just from just from the vibration. Uh, Drew Oxford actually cut a four inch. I want to say for six inch, a six inch uh, cornhole board assembled, and he and he and he cut the top of it uh, by by raising the uh, the gantry all the way up, and he had no problem. I mean, he could only cut to a depth of say you know half an inch or so, but there's there's plenty of room. And if you do uh, modify it to add uh, height, keep in mind, now you are probably delaying all your jobs considerably because every time it goes up and down and up and down, and it does that quite a bit during a job, it's going to have to go that much farther um, in most cases. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see if I can find a... Looks like... Uh... Joe Lydon is having some real problems with the links. I don't know if he's yeah, not. I, I see he says, I wish what? links could be posted here. You've totally lost me, Joe. This I don't I don't know what what part of this you're not you're not getting here, buddy. Um the links are on the PDF files. Yeah. In the in the drawing plans. If he prints his fi PDF files, he'll have them on paper. But then if he wants to access them, he has to type that path in there to get to the that point. Yeah. Let me, so if uh, he, he can't run a PDF file, then he can print and then see all the actual links. 
right here is and this this page is is right on on the website it's not showing here because i'm on it but if you come to the home page right here and it says gat and cnc component links okay you click on that here is all the stuff i've I can't make it any easier, guys. I really can't. Yeah. Uh, short of coming to your house and building the damn thing for you. That's about that's about all I can do. Yeah. If it says five, McMaster. And five-star lead screws. You click I, on the link. Where does it take you? It takes you right to the damn lead screw. Okay. I, I didn't even go that far. I actually, I actually went to McMaster Car, and with the list that you had on paper, I actually just typed in a search with, with with McMaster Car, but yeah, this is much easier. This is yeah. I mean, all and then of course for all the other stuff, here's here's different packs of the V group bearings. Uh, here's here's an eight pack or something of uh, the uh, the regular bearings. I mean, I got all kinds of stuff right here. It's right here. I just don't understand everybody having trouble um, trying to figure out like they like they're lost. I got the plans and they're like, well, what do I do now? What do I do now? And if I sound frustrated, it's because I am. I've never I've sold a ton of these kits and I've never had so many questions yeah. pop up that are just I don't know what to say. Take your time, read the plans. It's all right there. Uh, I know we got a lot of new folks because of the the Black Friday sale and all that. I think but come on, guys, you got to. Uh, and Johnny Johnny brings out a good point. Eight fourteen. He, uh, you know, start with the drawing, do the basic design. If you understand the basics, then you can customize. And then you know later, get to know the machine first. Do 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 step by step. Go go through the plans. Go through Dave's videos, which they explain a lot. And, uh, you know, if you haven't seen the videos, uh, what are you doing? I mean, uh, you, hey, you got let me Let me first go through these plans, too, real quick. And I don't really, I've never had to explain this before, but I'm going to explain it tonight. But I've had people say, I can't find a master list. The very first page is, is the master, master list. list. The page that said it that says Gatton 48 by 48 CNC router, that bill of materials that's on that sheet, that's a total of everything. Okay. Well, here's the way mechanical drawings work for those who may not know. There are a bunch of sub assemblies. So when you get these files and you print them out, you should group them up and staple them together. The one that's called table guide rail uh, assembly. Notice it says assembly. That means it's a sub assembly. Uh, you have pages one through four. So you should group those up and, and staple those together. We got an echo somewhere, guys. Uh, uh, there's some female conversation going on somewhere that I heard. Ah, it's gone. Okay. Right. Uh, the gantry assembly. That's a sub assembly for the gantry. Uh, it has sheets one through seven. So those should be stapled together. And that's how you, and I talk about this in the videos. You know, that's why there's 11 videos to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm working from sub assembly. You got one to do the, the different uprights, the, the left and the right upright. You can even have a simple one to do the router uh, mount. Uh, same thing for the Z box. You don't you don't spread out all these twenty one parts and then go. Well, how am I going to throw all this together? You do little sub assemblies, one little step at a time, just like I do in the videos. Yeah. So, and uh, and and not to sound not and and I and I apologize if I sound mean, but if that first page in that list is not to your liking then you may have to rethink this whole building thing because it, it's it's uh it's a pretty simple uh straightforward list and for a DIYer but um you know we're, we're not building blocks here we're building a, a a relatively complicated machine but it's very simple to build 
Awesome Wood Things at 816 has a question. Hey, Dave, before you go any farther on this thing, there's another question. Joe Lynn just found out that he had his ad blocker on, and it was blocking. Ben? So at the very last one here. Okay. All right, uh, 816, who we got? Hobby? 816, Awesome Wood Things. He's asking, <clears throat> what's a controller? Is it needed? Is it part of a four-axis CNC router kit? Uh, what does it have to do with the parallel ports? Oh. <laughs> you want to take it or shall I? <laughs> I'm going to let you handle that one. All right. <clears throat> okay. I'll add, uh, I'll add my two cents. There you go. A controller, a, a controller, simply put, uh, is it could be a, a controller is a motherboard that basically takes a simple input from your CAM software, like Mach 3, through a parallel port, interprets it into directions, and drives through the drivers, I hope I'm not getting too complicated, through the drivers to the stepper motors, drives the actual machine. So it's the heart and the brain of the CNC, a computer numerical controller. It basically takes a bunch of uh, designs that you made and translates them into movements into the, uh, into the stepper motors. The actual controller piece uh, you can get, uh, some people like to call the whole thing the controller, the drivers, and everything from the from your parallel port all the way to the drivers, and uh, some people just like to specify only the motherboard, but that's a controller. Now, it communicates through, normally through parallel signals, through a parallel port, but... You can get something like a UCNC, uh, which is sort of an adapter to go from Ethernet or from USB to parallel or directly to a controller and bypass the parallel altogether. Bottom line is you're going to get a signal from the computer to this motherboard uh, in some way, shape, or fashion, and then the motherboard will interpret those signals, send Another, a different signal to four different drivers, which are these four little, uh, think of them as relays, if you will, but they they take power and drive the four uh, axes or the four stepper motors that drive. Two of them, are, by the way, are, are, in, are in the same direction. And that's how your machine moves. Uh, Hope I didn't overcomplicate it, or I hope I simplified it for some folks. Okay, um, Dave. Yeah, I would. I would. Uh, I, I, I wasn't really paying attention for half of that. Sorry, because <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 yeah, we, we, we talk about we talk about it so often. Here. Yeah. Over yeah. here in the chat. So I'm just going to leave it wherever you left it. But All right. uh, Matt, you know, uh, that was awesome. Wood things, my, my buddy, Matt Haas, you know, if you got any questions and let me, let me, let me bring this up right now too. Uh, and I have mentioned this before. And so far, I think Mr. Senecola is the only one that's taken me up on it. this platform. I use is called StreamYard. It's great for doing live stream shows, but it's also great for doing, private hangouts. Me and Javi talk privately all the time. We get on here. Uh -huh. uh, it's kind of like using Skype, but we're not live. We're not broadcasting anywhere. The same, th the same thing can be used. We got another echo again, guys. Mike. I don't know who it is, but it's driving me nuts. Uh, uh, another thing it can be used for is if, and I'm going to use you as an example, Matt, if you get out there in your, your shop and you start building this thing and you got a question, and you've looked at the videos and you've looked at the plans and you, it's just not making sense to you. All you got to do is either message me or text me or whatever. And I can come in here or I can go to my shop with a laptop and you can pull out your laptop and we can do a private 
I, I don't want to say hangout because it's not, you know, everybody thinks of the old Google Hangouts. It's not a hangout, but that's kind of, it's kind of like that. We can do a private tech support session where you've got video and I can see what you're trying to explain to me and I can do screen shares and say, okay, Matt, here's the Mach 3 setting. This is what's why you're not getting it to work. You know, this is a really valuable tool. And I've mentioned it a couple of times and nobody has ever called me, I, but I keep saying, seeing questions and stuff like that. Yeah. In he the was Facebook groups. He, he just responded. He's just trying to wrap his head around the whole theory. He's got it. Mach three to controller, to drivers, to motors. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 But, so me, but again, I just want to emphasize anybody's got a problem, you know, the Facebook chat or the Facebook group is a good place to start. But if you're, you know, you need an answer pretty quick. Uh, usually I'm, I'm where I can at least get on here for a second. I may not have time to go into depth, but uh, we, we'll get you taken care of with, with your questions. So, Hey, Dave, I can't remember the show that you had your mock-up board where it shows all the components. I don't know what a show number it is, but uh, there is a show that shows all the components from the computer through the drivers, through the breakout box and how to hook this stuff up. And, and I, I yeah, that's, try and been, that's been uh, a little while ago. No, uh, it's still pretty close. Cause it shows all the components. The, but the one when I had that board behind me. Yes. Okay. Yeah. that you, was... you can refer to that and that that'll show everything. It's, I mean, yeah, uh, we have another question here uh, at uh, from Stephen Tarantino or Taranto Tarantino Taranto uh, eight twenty three. Is the Gatton CNC the same class as the Lowrider two as far as do it yourself CNCs? Definitely not. Uh, I was sold on the Lowrider two by V one, and then I saw yours. I don't need it for professional use; just sign making, etc. That would, if you were listening earlier, that would fall under the, uh, again, I, I don't want to belittle any CNC because they each have their, their, their place, but it would be under the, the, the toy CNCs, the, uh, the, uh, I call I it even, toy I don't C even know what a low rider is myself. It's, it's <laughs> similar, it's similar to, uh, uh, what, uh, Inventables, what's the, what's the, uh, the X-Carve? Uh, the X, the, the X-Carve yeah. and, and things like that. Yeah, they're, they're. Uh, they're fine if you want to take your time and use a Dremel tool, or, or I, I say Dremel tool, but a, a very, very uh, small uh, router to, to carve stuff. But for if, if you're going to make money from it, uh, uh, start with a Gatton because uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, or as a hobby CNC. Yeah. But I mean, that's uh, again, that's it's completely your call. If you're if you're more comfortable with that one, then that's fine. It's just. Uh, I want to uh, real quick. I, I'm going to do something while. Go ahead and find another question here, Javi, while I while you I got get... it. You got it. And let's see. Uh, let's see. Clyde was saying lots of hardware could be purchased at Home Depot or Lowe's here in Canada. Yep. Um, OK, that's well, that's good. Because one of the things I wanted to show, let me get something picked out here. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, something like this. Okay, this is probably a pretty easy thing, but um, well, let me let me do let me do something else. Let me do another one. Yeah. Well, I can tell you, if I had to do it over again, I would not go to Home Depot to get the parts. I would spend an extra couple of dollars and. Get it through yep. McMaster car. And oh yeah, yeah. I remember when you were going through that. I remember yeah. that. Uh, let me find it here. Here we go. Okay, now I'm just going to use this one as an example here. But a lot of times I will have McMaster car links, just like Mike mentioned. And but on some on some things, when you look on the list, you go, well, for McMaster car, you got to buy a box of fifty. And I need six of them. Well, the reason I use McMaster Car to source the product is two reasons. One, you know they're going to have it. You yeah. might pay a little more for it, but you know they're going to have it. And you'll definitely get exactly what you order. 
But, uh, and the other thing is, and I'm going to sc uh, screen share here again. All right, here's an example of a T-nut. So if I put a link and, it, and it's McMaster car and you go to it and you go, well, dang, I only need five of them and I got to buy a box of 50. This is also just so people can see exactly what I'm talking about. Because some people don't know what a T-nut is or, you know. Uh, or they think it's the spiked one, which falls other, out. You know, yeah, other things. So, you know, in other words, you could go to McMaster Car, print this picture out or this sheet out here, take it to your local Ace Hardware or your, you know, you know, your uh whoever your family bar, uh, hardware uh, place is and say, Hey, I need six of these or whatever. And they, you know, and they probably got them and you know, you don't have to source everything from McMaster. But the reason I used McMaster in designing this is because not only do they always have what uh you know, they never run out of anything. Trust me. They never, and, and they've they never got, run out of and, anything. And they've got detailed descriptions of everything. And they and they got detail. But also, in designing it, you can actually download the 3D model. So when I go to get a bolt or a nut or whatever, I can download that 3D model and import it right into my drawings. And it saves me time from having to draw stuff. So that's one reason why I use them. And that's why they're part numbers and all are in my drawings. So, all right. Uh, what other questions? Okay. George Rothfuss, 823. This is a often asked question. I was thinking about the width of the table. And by the way, I'll be, I will, I'll be making a, a detailed video on this. I'll be thinking, uh, I'm <clears throat> thinking about the width of the table. I want to cut a four foot wide or half of a four by eight. So generally how wide is the gantry to run the 48 inch board? Uh, that depends on how much clamping room you have, but the bare minimum that you need is uh, 52 and 5 eighths inches. Uh, <laughs> uh, the uh, the gantry, the the between between uprights. Uh, I I that's pretty clear. I think you understood that. So in other words, you need four and 5 eighths inches more than the width you are cutting. That's being very specific, but Keep in mind, you may want to clamp that down. So, uh, and other than the front and the back, if you want to clamp it on the sides, you're going to have to stretch that out a little bit more to get uh, a little more clamping room in there. So it's completely up to you. Yeah, I, I would recommend about 54 to 56 inches. Yep. Somewhere in there if you want to do a, a 48 wide. Now, I cut 48 wide all the time. I mean, every day. I cut 48 inches wide, but when I'm cutting 48 inches wide, uh, I mean, think about it. What are you going to be cutting it? Well, I guess you might be cutting a, a board that long or something, but, but if you're cutting anything big, it's probably going to be plywood or, or maybe MDF or something. But I always clamp the 48 wide. I stick it on there and I don't have, I don't have any way to clamp on the side because it covers my farthest T track, but I clamp in the front and the back. And I always look every time I pull a blank out, you know, there's, there's veneer on both sides. It's, it's a good side on either side. So I always look down the side of it and always try to put it, put it on the table so that if there's any bow, it's going up this way and not down this way. Because if you clamp it when it's going down this way, it's still going to be humped up in the middle. But if you flip it over where it's bowed up and then you use the clamps to pull the corners down, then it will be uh, much flatter. But 52 to 56 inches or no, 50. I'm sorry, 50. What did I say? 54 to 56 inches, I think, is about what you need to get to do a 48 wide. Uh, Patrick was being a uh, smart. You know what? Uh, he said, Dave, can you send me the STL file of your links? <laughs> yeah. yeah no yeah. thanks <laughs> where's that where's that boot but that's I yeah i was gonna say uh, long patrick's <laughs> yeah i sent the links for the v group very so my kids okay i'm uh,
Honey, Clyde Labonte sent the links to his to the V Groove bearings to his kids as a suggestion for uh, for a Christmas uh, list. Yeah, yeah. Did I drop out? Oh no. No, okay. you're still here. Okay. All right. Um, I'm still searching. I'm still searching. I'm I'm at eight thirty two. He says you're getting grayer on this show. Yeah. It's uh you know, I, I I understand everybody's you know, everybody's new and everybody starts from from square one. But it's it's really frustrating. And I know it's because of the, the big sale and a lot of people jumping on the bandwagon and buying and I appreciate that. I really do. But there's so much information that's already out there. And people aren't taking the time to look for it. And it, and it kind of worries me because I'm thinking if you don't take the, you know, if it's too much work for you to go look to find a link or do this, then how in the heck are you ever going to build your machine? Because, you know, <laughs> I guess I keep saying it's not rocket science, but you are building a CNC machine. It's not an Ikea table or something you're putting. Yeah, as, as Mike Smith put it, 835, uh, not everyone's mechanically inclined, even though they want to have a CNC machine. I mean, it's, it's understandable that, you know, you need a certain, even though it's a very simple build for most of us in this community, we have this skill set, that, but not everybody has, you know, the, the skill set. Uh, to do something hey, Dave, like you don't offer the uh, service of you come to our house to build it for us? You got uh, rid of that service? I could, <laughs> I could offer that service, but I guarantee I'm to you, nobody would be able to afford me. <laughs> and plus, you'd have to put up my dogs. Room and board and food for my dogs. Woodshop, um, Woodshop Do Commandments is asking if you're willing to ship a garage works to Canada. No. All right. <clears throat> I get, you know, that's the other thing that, that, that I start to get a little peeved about. I've got stuff on my website. What you see on there and where I'll ship, that's it. You know, but I always get people that live in, you know what, Egypt, you know, can you ship me one here? No. If I, if I did, it'd be on the website and you'd be allowed to purchase it. So, I just get tired of, of that question. I understand they're, you know, especially got in CNC, they're great things. Everybody wants one, but it's just for one thing, if I shipped all these other countries, then you're not really building again in CNC. You're just using the plywood I sent you because you're not going to be able to source all this stuff I have specced out. And I don't want a bunch of other machines out there that are less than you know, what they should be. And then people shooting YouTube videos and going, well, I built this and it's crap, but yeah, you had to source out a bunch of other junk because of where you live. So sorry, but LB, LB sharp. Ship and that's it. Uh, 838 LB sharp. He was talking earlier about building his with a chain drive uh, that he built his with a chain drive and he's very happy with it, but he's asking why it's not more popular. Um, and well, I, well, I know, I know even, my reason for it. I'm, a, I'm already uh, overheating tonight, so I'm not even going to talk about chain <laughs> drive. I am not a fan of chain drive. If you're happy with it, more power to you. But I am not a fan of chain drive. Yeah, I've seen I've seen a few people attempt the chain drive build, and and uh, if you're not very very accurate with the tensioning and everything, and uh, and with the changes in temperature, the accuracy just goes right out the window compared to a Compared to a to, and there and there's so many things that can go wrong and it's a lot more maintenance, but that there are advantages. You can go four by eight, but for that, I mean, uh, well, buy a buy a big machine. <laughs> if anybody's getting rust on their lead screw, you're probably not using it enough. That's the only thing I can say. <laughs> yeah. I an, I answered a question too on that. It, if there's any problems, and I just said I've been running mine since 2016, and I just put a little white lithium grease, a very thin coat on it, and if it gets any sawdust on it, I brush it off and put a tiny little white mine was, lithium mine grease was sitting, on it. Mine was sitting for a year, and it didn't get any rust on it. 
Yeah, the, I've, I've been a big fan of the, the white lithium grease. I've been talking about that for years since my early, early builds. And you put that stuff on there and those things stay greasy forever. You know, you bump up against the lead screw and you'll have black, you know, stuff all over your hands from it. So if, if that's why I say if somebody's getting rust on their lead screw, they've let it get, you know, they've wiped it down or something, let it get dry, and then they're not using the machine yeah. or something. And there's there's two there's two schools of thought on that too, Dave, because I, I, I know that a lot of people don't like using grease because it just attracts the sawdust. <laughs> There's always that. Well, I know, but you know. But yeah, I prefer the grease. I if mean, you're using the Acme nuts that I spec out, it, it keeps the sawdust all because the the white lithium grease will get a yeah. little glob of it right on on both on the sides ends. of the lead yep. nut, and then it kind of picks up all the the dust, so it doesn't get in your Acme nut. It, okay. it pushes it out of the way. So, I I can tell you, I'm in a I'm in a garage that's not temperature controlled. And I don't have any rust on my lead screws, but yeah, yeah. The only only rust I've ever gotten on lead screws is like I bet you I could go out there and find some of the drop where I've cut off of lead screws, and it's it's set out there and it's got dust on it and it's you know dried up and stuff. There might you might be able to find some rust on some of those, but but I'm not using those. They're just pieces of drop. Uh, even when you get the uh, the lead screws from McMaster car, they come in that cardboard tube that's inside a plastic sleeve and they're oily when you pull them out. And that's, that's why they do that to keep that, you know, that's anything with metal. You got to keep it, uh, you got to keep it oily and, and or it'll rust. Um, well, so you know, I made a, I made a beginner mistake when I first built my machine uh, the very first big project I had, a friend come over as soon as he knew that I had a CNC machine, and I put a board on it that went extended back too far on my bed, and I didn't mark where the end was. And the 425 ounce steppers actually pulled the lead screw right off the motor shaft. I couldn't figure out for the longest time and, until I found out that I was going over a half inch on my uh, Y limit. So I put a big mark on my bed to make sure that I don't put anything beyond that, try to cut beyond that. Yeah. <laughs> Clyde, Clyde Labonte, they're, they're, they're discussing about uh, they're going back and forth. There's a bunch of questions on Canada and and where do you get your your uh, your angles? And Princess Auto was a suggestion, and and Clyde's joking around. He says, "Cut your cut up your bed frame and use the steel angle from it." <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, by the way, another comment on LB's you know chain drive thing. Another reason why uh, we're not talking about chain drive or, or for that matter, uh, rack and rack and uh, well, the rack and pinion is just a, a difference in price. But it's it's one of those answers that it's built this way. Why not that way? Well, because why not a different way? It's you know why is it two inches? Because it's not tw twenty. Uh, it's just. Uh, that's the way it was designed is the answer. There's no there's no right or wrong about it. This is a do it yourself kit. Our suggestion has always been build it per spec, build it for the plans, get used to it, then change it. But by all means, it's do it yourself. Do it the way you want to and and if you're happy with it, we're happy. Well, Dave's happy. I'm always happy. Yeah. Yeah, that <laughs> Yeah, again, this this is a, a, a DIY kit, as are all of the ones I sell. I don't sell complete things. I give people the opportunity to get into this and save themselves money by putting in the sweat equity, doing things yourself. Um, now, having said that, if you buy a Gatton and you know you're doing it yourself, you can you can change the uh, the size of it, make it bigger, make it smaller, make it longer, make it shorter whatever you want to do. Now, if you start going crazy and want to start doing modifications that are totally out of spec because you want to use something different than mine, 
you're kind of on your own because I'm not going to sit here and tell you how to use uh, any of this other stuff, you know, because yeah. I designed it to be cheap, uh, still work good and, and easy to build. So uh, eight eight forty nine. David Crook has a question. Uh, I have asked this question before, not here, uh, but he still doesn't understand. He wants I want a cutting area of at least 48 by 48. What's the smallest size work table part that supports the router? Okay, that I could use. The part that supports the router is the gantry. Uh, we've answered it earlier, but add add uh, add five inches to it or add nine inches to it, to put it simply, if you want two-inch clamps on the side. Dave, Dave said earlier yeah, 54, and as far 56 as the back, inches. You're going to lose, uh, as designed, you're going to lose about 13 and a half. I always round it up and call it 14, 14. inches from the from the back yeah um basically from where the uh motor uh where the motor starts the where the uh, uh what are those things called that hold the bearings that hold the, <laughs> the those the bearing mounts <laughs> that's it <laughs> from the bearing mounts in the back oh i knew it was such a complicated name uh from the bearing mounts to the back all uh, uh, if you if you measure to the center of your router, you're looking at just under 14 inches. So that's what you lose in the back. So add 14 inches if you want 48 inches on the Y. Well, you um, really don't lose anything. You gain storage space. You gain storage space <laughs> in the back. You well, yeah. <laughs> as long but as you, you lose, don't put it too high. You lose yeah, cut it. Because then yeah. it falls off the back. <laughs> yeah, lo you lose cutting area, and then there'll be people telling me, "Well, why not stick the board out the front? Because you got well, the front doesn't stick out as much as the back loses." So, <laughs> let me. So, uh, I want to get back to this. This I think this is the guy that was asking the question about, "Will I ship a Garage Works to Canada?" Let Let me back up on that just a bit. I don't ship them to Canada, but I have shipped things to a UPS store that's on the border and that Canadian person drove across and got them and how he gets it across. That's his business, not mine. Uh, so yeah, I will ship to a place in the United States for a person in Canada that's buying it, but I do not ship to Canada, the garage works. I do the Gatton, but not the garage works. So maybe that'll clear some things up. <laughs> hey, I think you got you get to use your kicking out button again. L Mr. Jerry Blakesley, our dear friend, <laughs> 849. Is this the place to come and get pirate files for the CNC? Oh. <laughs> Smart butt. It's a good thing I love you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, uh, David, did we answer your question as far as the uh, the area on the, the, you know, again, I'm going to be making a video on it in the next couple of weeks. So because um, that question gets asked an awful lot and I want to do something detailed. I'm trying to understand this. He says the back of the CNC is the place to put your logo so it shows up on YouTube videos. I never record the back of my CNC. It's always the front. But I do have, if you come to my, my shop, Matt, I do have uh, Gatton CNC engraved on both the front and the back of my gantry. And also all the garage works I sell have the decal on the front and the back of the frame. I did that in case somebody wanted to put put the motors in the front, which I don't know why they would do that because they, you'd run into them all the time. But, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, Harry, Harry, Harry Raglan makes a good suggestion about an earlier question about if you don't have the skills to build it, get a uh, shop teacher, <laughs> buy, buy all the parts and, and get a, uh, yeah, get a shop uh, teacher to yeah. find a student to come build it for you. Yep. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> I, I, and again, I, I, I don't want people to think I'm just a real jerk here because, some of them probably do, but 
But I got to tell you, it's it's not rocket science, guys. There are hundreds. I'm not just blowing smoke up your. There are hundreds of these things out there, and people have built them with far less questions than than what I've been getting recently. So I think it's just that there's so many new people, and they and everybody's in a hurry. They're anxious, and I get all that. But take time to watch the. I had somebody. Oh, um, um, somebody was talking about, he was saying, I was watching the videos and I can't find this. And I'm like, you're not paying attention because I can watch the same video and I see myself say it. I see myself show it, what you're just asking me. So, like I said, I don't have, uh, I, I want everybody to be happy with their build. I want them to have fun with this. It's, it's, Again, it's not rocket science. I say that all the time, but you have to put forth a little effort yourself. You got to spend some time watching videos. You got to read the plans. You got to check out the stuff on the website. That's what all that information is for. This, the Gatton CNC thing has gotten so big now. In the early days, I could stop and answer all these questions one-on-one -on -one with people. Nowadays, I don't have time because I'm still a one man shop. I'm not building some big company here with, you know, 20 other people with me. It's just me. So I don't have time to answer that same question over and over and over and over again. That's why I put information on the website. It's in the videos. We do these shows. We're putting in the effort here. You got to put in a little effort too and, and, Go look for the stuff before you ask the question, because I guarantee you 99% of the time, the answer is out there already. Uh, if I sound like I'm venting, I'm sorry. Maybe I am a little bit, but it's this, that's just the way it is. Yeah. You know, the stuff's out there. I've been doing this a long, long time, and the stuff is out there in videos, I, websites. Before I, built, before I built mine, Dave, I, I watched your videos. I ordered the stuff. And then I actually watched the videos and built it as I watched the video. So as you did it in your video, I pretty much did it in the shop, you know, and I think what was it? I think it was like three days I did Mars, mine. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And something else I, I, I want to bring up too, because I've seen this pop up too. I designed this thing using a computer, a 3D modeling software. And even, even me, when I got ready to build it to, for the videos, I thought, well, I designed this to keep it simple and inexpensive. I designed it where even if somebody didn't have a table saw, they could go to Lowe's or Home Depot or Menards or somewhere and get them to cut a half sheet of plywood for them if they didn't. Or, or a lot of times those places sell plywood by the half sheet. And they, and they could take it home and then they'd have their table, you know, so they could build. You know, so it was all designed around that 48 by 48 table. But then when I got ready to do the build videos, I'm thinking, well, I don't need another GAT and CNC. So this one I was going to give to my buddy Jim. And I thought, well, I'm going to make it at least like most of you guys, you want to at least make it wide enough for <laughs> to be able to put a 48 wide piece on there. So that's what I did. So what you'll notice in the build videos that instead of making it 48, the table 48 by 48, I made it, I forget what it was, 50, I don't even remember what what's in some of my own videos. The 56, I think, wide by, uh, I think it was 48 deep, but it was, but I made it wider. Uh, and also you'll notice other things too, where I might do something one way in the plans but then when I get ready to do the, the video, I might go, you know what? I bet this would work just as good. And I use regular wood screws or something because I think on the on the angles on the side, I had it where you could bolt uh, kind of like the way the old shoestring budget was. You line up the two angles and you drill all the way through and put a, a screw with a nut on the other end or a bolt up with a nut on the other end. And then I thought, you know what? I bet wood screws because you're putting so many in there. I bet this will hold it. So that's why that's how it's done in the video. But again, folks, don't get confused by it. Well, he did it one way in the video and he does it another way in the play. It's a DIY kit. You can do it however you want to yeah. use the videos and the plans as a, as a guideline. But 
if you've got some, you know, if I'm calling out for some bolts or something and you've got some wood screws or deck screws, that's what I use, uh, laying around and you go, you know what, this probably worked good enough. Go ahead and use it. That's, you know, don't go out and buy something just, yeah. you know, just to be buying it, you know. Uh, David Crook was, uh, I, I want to go back to his question because I didn't fully answer it. He says, no, uh, 858. He says, no, I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about the stand for the CNC. I guess he's using the wrong name. Um, I guess he's referring to the actual table portion or rather the support for the table. Uh, the front and the back of the supports are flush with the with the tabletop. The sides are inset one and seven eighths inches on either side with the plywood top. I wonder, I don't know if that answers your question. So you base your tabletop size on the, uh, if you, you can go by the plans or you could base your tabletop size on your surface area, what you want, and do all your calculations. And then the actual supports, the table supports, uh, inset one and seven eighths inches on either side on the sides and flush with the plywood on the front and the back. Is that correct, Dave? Um, I don't know. What listening? No, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> now the one and seven eighths thing, that's, that's the strip that you mount the lower angle to. And it's, I, I've seen people come up and somebody was going, well, why did he do that? Why not to, you know, and I don't know why people have to stop and try to rethink everything, but it's really simple in the videos. I was, you know, or in the plans rather, it calls for using a half sheet of plywood. So a half sheet of plywood is going to be 48 inches. Okay. Now you go buy that half sheet of plywood. It might be 48 and a 16. It might be 47 and 15, six, you know, it may not be exact. Or if you cut it yourself, you may not get it exact. And the frame that's down below it is made to be four inches shorter than that 48 inch top. So in other words, it should be 44 inches. Well, if you're making that frame and you get, you know, you get a 16th big or let's say you get an eighth big, you know, you might go, ah, heck, I'm not tearing it apart. I'm just going to go with that. Well, then when you put that table on top, you're supposed to overhang two inches on each side. I, I stand corrected. Not one and seven eighths. It's actually 40, two inches. 44. Side, right? So if that other strip was two inches and you put one on each side, and but you've made that frame below a hair big, now you're not going to be able to get that outside angle to flush up. So... It's one and seven eighths, which gives you plenty of room to screw up and it still be functional. I, I mentioned something the other day. I don't know if it was you or Javi. I, was, I think it probably was you. I don't know. But one of the things you learn to do when you're dealing with sheet metal and you're designing stuff for guys out in the shop, welders, fabricators, this stuff, you have to do what we refer to as idiot proof it. In other words, you design it where if somebody's not paying attention, it's impossible for them to screw it up. Um, you know, when you've got a right and a left hand part and they absolutely have to be put on the right way, you have to design them different so that if they, somebody grabs a right hand part and they go to put it over here, it won't fit over here. So they don't weld it wrong yeah and then they have to come back cut it off so you know it's things like that you have to idiot proof stuff so that's kind of what that one and seven eight strip is if i'd have made it two inches and somebody makes that frame a little big then it's not going to get the line up and that's what's important it doesn't matter what that gap is yeah it doesn't make a flip you know it could be an inch but you have to design it so when you put that lower angle on there it, you got to be able to flush it with the one on the top. 11 Atlantica, uh, 849. Uh, 
he noticed on your machine you have a four gang switch box on the front of the box. What are those switches besides power to the CNC? <laughs> Uh, yeah, that shows up in all of my videos and stuff. That is my dear friend, uh, Jim, who lives around the corner. The guy I was just talking about that got, that I gave the CNC to that, um, uh, that I did in the build videos. He's my electrician. He's an old country. He refers to himself as an old country electrician. Uh, and he comes over and anytime I need any kind of electrical work done, he comes over here and does it. And, um, we just swap things out. I give him CNCs and he does electrical work for me. So it works out pretty good. Uh, but he made me, uh, you'll see the, the four gang switch box. There's also the cable that runs to the back of the machine that has the four gang outlets back there. So this, this, and he's got the same thing on his machine and he's, he's actually made me a couple of sets of those. So I, I got another one on my machine out in the shop, one out in the garage as well. But, uh, so I have one where if, in fact, I don't have it where I can see it now, but if the, the one on the far right is you flip that and it turns on the breaker that, uh, turns on the VFD, the, Next one over, I'm trying to think what it does. I'll think of it in a minute. Anyway, the, the second one from the left turns on the uh, drive box. And it's basically just I have this all these other things, the switch for them all turned on, and I just have them plugged into that outlet so that I can do everything right there from the front of the machine. Uh, one of them I just have for, you know, where I have a shop vac plugged in and stuff like that. But it's just simple when you're always reaching for the same place for the switches. Um, but that's all it is. Nothing, nothing real fancy. One of the things I did on my machine since it's getting to Christmas, you have a lot of these uh, remote control Christmas light things that you can do and use a little remote. So I have one on my router, one on my dust collection one for my laser, and it works out pretty slick. Yeah. I hope we're not missing any questions. Here. No, I'm, I'm up to 9.08. I'm, I'm, I'm working my way okay. down. Well, I'm, I'm hoping you're watching them because there's so I, I, many I got, just I'm Keep chatting. Started. I haven't found a, a new one here. <laughs> oh, uh, Stephen Tarantino said, uh, I, I said I was going to make a video. Uh, my videos could be found at Javi's Woodshop on YouTube. Uh, if you're on, if you're listening, yes, you are on YouTube, right click on my name. I just, I just won't comment on this. If you, you know, he's saying make it five by five, which is 60 by 60 to cut four by four. 60 inches is overkill on the width. If you're only wanting to cut and clamp four by four in my book, but uh, 54 to 56 is more reasonable. Yeah, I just uh, I just put a post. So uh, right click uh, to the right of my post on YouTube. Uh, if you right click, you can go to my channel, subscribe, and uh, and I'd appreciate it. But uh, a lot of homesteading videos on there now. But I'll be getting back to the CNC world. Okay, let's see here. I'm I'm still looking. I'm at nine oh nine. Oh, okay, okay. I see. Matt's clearing something up here. You know, he he mentioned this a while ago, and we're think when I think of back of the CNC, I always think of the gantry. And down here, he's saying, I was referring to the fourteen inch dead space. Right on the top, yeah, from the top the view. Table. Yeah, good it, point. That you could do that, uh, and especially Matt, if you're planning on shooting videos in the future and doing overhead cameras, that'd be an excellent way to, uh, to have uh, a logo or something show up back there. Okay. So 11 Atlantica 909, uh, has a, a question. Um, I saw Dave use a stick to keep the spacing on the aluminum angles on top. I can see why that works on the top. How can you be sure the ones underneath are lined up with the top ones? That's a, that's a good question. I have, well, that's, that's why that strip is, that the lower angle goes to is one and seven eight. So there's, re but you're actually pulling it out flush. You're taking a straight edge and you know, you've already got the top one set. So now you're putting a straight edge. Make sure your board is you parallel have, and flush. You if, if, you're, flush. if your board is not parallel and flush, that's, that's where it, that's, that's where there's a problem. 
what yeah. what I what I did was I actually well I had another CNC but I used the CNC to cut myself a an angle but that would accommodate the top angle the the top uh, L bra- uh, the top L bracket so it was an angle that I would set on top and then I'd flush it up against uh, that but uh, I mean you can get creative but the bottom line is flush it up make sure that plywood is Jerry's got is, a comment here because I was talking about making stuff idiot proof. He goes, yeah. fool, no such thing anymore. <laughs> fool has gone to a completely different level than it used to be. Amen to that, Jerry. I'll have to concur with that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Rob's got something here. There's a contest going on between programmers trying to idiot proof programs in the universe. <laughs> Making worse idiots. Universe is winning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just think about the Boeing uh, airplane that they tried to idiot proof. Crashed two of them. Yeah. Okay, we're caught up. <laughs> okay, I, I, hope so. I hope we haven't missed the. If uh, we've missed one of your questions, please post it again and I'll be happy right, to, well, if to we're get to um... it. Mm. All right. That's right. You've got a list of questions. 60 inches is overkill for 49 by 48 sheet. I just built mine 66 by 66. Well, I mean, yeah, you need extra room for clamping, but how big are your clamps? You don't need that much room. Uh, but, you know, whatever. Uh, all right. Yeah, I got, I got somebody who uh, had a bunch of questions but said they weren't going to be able to watch the show live, so they – emailed me their questions and some of them we probably uh, covered uh, but I know some of them we haven't so I'll, I'll ask uh, I'll read them off here and we'll answer them as well because it'll help help other people uh, one of the questions he had was about wiring it says what gauge wiring is recommended for wiring the power supply to stepper motor and motors to drivers can this all be the same gauge 14 16 I, I 14 is fine you you I mean that's and that's uh, I well, mean six, I, 16 is fine and it's pretty thick as it is well are you talking about to the drivers from the drivers to the to the stepper motors yeah yeah what what that's gauge pretty, that's pretty healthy isn't it yeah well <laughs> again uh, yeah you can go all the way down to 20. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna say uh, twenty two to eighteen, something yeah. like that for that. Yeah, because uh, the way those drivers are, you get it too big, you're not gonna be able to get it stuck in that that little tiny thing where you try that, to tighten that's it. That's true. Down. That's true. Oh, so, I but. mean, you're you're pulling three amps. So let me. I got to go back to my calculations again. If, a, you look, uh, if you're watching on YouTube and you click uh, down below the video portion and you click that show more thing you'll see i've got a ton of different links and i've got a uh, a link there to some uh, belden uh, wire the um it's the four wire stranded with the shielded yeah and i think if i remember right i think it's let me look i think it's 18 gauge okay so yeah anything over 22 We'll handle three yeah, amps. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a link to a 500 foot thing of uh, 18 gate. No, that's the 18 two. There's another one I've got somewhere that's the four wire shielded. Or I thought I had a link. Thanks, Todd. I mean, I, I just looked it up on my on my chart. Uh, anything over 22 gauge will handle three and a half, uh, which is which is the maximum amperage that you're going to be drawing from any of these motors at any given time. So I mean, I. You know, yeah. I, I always like to go over a little bit 20, but but yeah. 22 is. A, uh, I got a link to the Belden. It's 18.4, the gray shielded stuff, plenty. which is exactly what. Um, well, actually, I think it's a little heavier than what Xylotex used to use. And 18, 18 should handle somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 16 amps. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're not going to have a problem with that. Well, the okay. only thing you want to make sure is you want stranded wire, not solid. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. Another question he had was, what are the name of the clips or type of clips to use on the ends of stepper motor, stepper motor short wires to then connect, connect to a lar longer patch cable that would run back to the motors. And I guess he's talking about uh, the Molex, you know, the yeah. Xylex always uh, the, came with Molex connectors. Yeah. I'm not a big fan. Not of those. A, no, do they not use. Yeah. For, uh, they're great for plug and play, but they're, they're a very cheap connector. You know, you can get a lot of different kinds. There's the stuff they call aircraft connectors or, Maybe yeah. a little bit killed, but yeah, which which then you run into the problem with the aircraft connectors that they're 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 a pain to solder. If you if you don't know how to solder well, you 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 may end up with a bad solder, and then and then you're going to have a, a contact there. I I wired mine directly. I don't plan on on changing mine up or moving it or or anything. So once I know the length of the cables. I just I cut them to size. I wired them directly, and and if I have to change a stepper motor in the future, which is very rare, I'll cut it and resolder it. Well, what I've what I've done on on mine is uh, I've used those terminal blocks, mm -hmm. uh, which yeah, 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 that could work. All too. that stuff is length. You know, Joe is. I don't know if Joe's still out there. We might have made him mad and he left. But if Joe's still out there, you want links? Look in the show description here. I got links there, buddy. Um, there's a ton of them for all, all, everything I've ever bought, uh, for my CNC stuff is in that. Yeah. With what I'm, I'm, yeah. Like Clyde says, heat shrink right on top, you know, put the heat shrink, put the, put the connectors. I might, it's a nice solid connection. It's not going to be going bad on you. You put the heat shrink. Don't, don't, I mean, if, if you, if you have that skill, if not, well, electrical tape, but I do enjoy a good heat shrink and, yeah. uh, and you're not going to have an issue ever with 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 that. And terminal blocks, yeah, absolutely, it's another it's another option. Terminal, I mean, terminal blocks are easy. If you don't yeah. if you don't have a soldering gun or a soldering yeah. thing, a and screwdriver, you don't just buy terminal blocks. They're cheap, yeah. uh, and they work great. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that's that's the way I do. I have my my wiring coming from my stepper motor through my drag chain. It goes to a terminal block. Then on the other side of the terminal block goes a shorter wire goes from there to my driver. Especially, especially the ones with the little set screws, as opposed to the terminal ter the screws where you have to wrap the wire around. Just to just insert the wire with the set screw and and uh, tighten it, and you're and you're done. Well, I went even uh, to the big box store, and I use trailer wire and trailer connectors, and I've been mm -hmm. running that way for three years. They got a nice heavy uh, plastic yep. coating on the wires. It yeah. bends. Yeah. And, and you it know works what? Great. And you know what? I bet your CNC doesn't even know that that's trailer wire. I bet it don't either. Uh, so it'll work fine. Yeah. <laughs> of course, I don't have any uh, fluorescent lights in my shop anymore. I have LED lights. So if you have a lot of uh, uh, old lighting in there you could get a lot of interference but with led lights no problem okay. no ballast to do there you go Stephen has a great question down. here uh i want to make sure i get to this how do you get a hold of you uh steven the he says do i have a link you can drop or just tell us the name of this software you said so we can use to communicate with you this is one of the great things that it's called Streamyard. is the platform i'm using uh, all one word, stream yard, all one word. But the great thing is, unlike Google Hangouts and all that other stuff where you kind of had to have plugins installed and all that, you don't need anything installed. If you need to get in touch with me and want to do a one on one video thing and talk about stuff, ask questions or whatever, all you have to do is either get in contact with me with Facebook Messenger or email me from the website or uh, you can text me if you know my number and stuff. And all I do, all like when I get ready to do a show for these guys, I just take the link of the uh, stream yard and I send it to them in Facebook messenger. They click on it and boom, they're here. There's no software yeah. you have to install, no plugins, no nothing. It's super easy. That's why I keep trying to remind yeah. people that, Hey, this is great, not just for live streams, 
but just for yeah. one on one or or even a small group of people. Just like send a, Dave a group of people on Facebook that say, man, we're all having trouble getting this to work. You know, we could do like a small we can have up to six people in the stream, including including uh, myself. So I could have myself and five other people on a little miniature uh, tech support session and you know yeah it's it's all about coordinating it's like going to a bar and meeting somebody so tell dave what times give him a list of times that are convenient for you if you have an issue that you and and he'll get back to you and he'll say oh at this time uh and here's the link click and 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 you'll meet and you'll see each other okay so Next. Hope, everybody's, hope everybody's clear on that. All right. What Next else do we question? got? Any other questions? Not, not over here. Uh, you've got another one. Uh, All on right. Let me uh, let me see here. Okay. We may have covered this one, I think. He says, Hard, hardware. I'm having trouble determining from some of the drawings which size screws, size, and type to use. For example, the Y-axis motor mounts and Y-axis bearing mount drawings, which type of screws to mount? The motor to the mount, the motor to the mount, and I'm guessing I can use any sort of deck screw to mount the end of the mount to the tape. Yeah, all that I show in the videos. You know, I always clamp those uh, the motor the the Y axis motor mounts and the the other end that holds the bearing that for the lead screw. I always clamp them to start until I fire up the machine and run it around. And then at, once I've got them aligned and make sure there's no drag, then I screw them in and secure them. What the ones to the motor, the motor mounts to the, uh, to the motors, those are eight thirty second, ten thirty second 10 uh, screws. They're, t they're, um, well, I use 10, 24, but 10, 24, can, that's you, it. Use 10, 32. If you want to use the fine thread. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, well, I think I, I, from from the question, I think that's specifically what he was asking is is what those were, uh, which ten twenty four. Hey, whatever works, whatever fits through the yeah. hole and and is long enough. You know, I, I I went to Home Depot and I got myself a ten uh, set of ten twenty fours for that. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I just you know, fine thread is not really necessary for. That that's why I've always used the ten twenty four versus the ten thirty two. Uh, another question he had, and this I don't understand at all, because he says item twenty six on the parts list labeled just as Acme, and part number twenty six on my list says Z angle. So I think I don't know where he got Acme. He said I did get clarification from the Facebook group. This was three quarter by three quarter by eighteen angle. Which is why mine says Z angle because that's what that's what it is. Anyway, yeah. Uh, and then he's got some general stuff here. He says I didn't see specifically in your assembly video on how to add the bearings and wheels. I don't know what he means by wheels to the various axis parts that needed them. Is that in a video somewhere with a detailed close up? Yes, it's in the video, and also there are. That's that's what the plans are for. That where I can show a detailed drawing where I circle just the part where the you'll see the the bolt. You'll be able to see that there's the bolt head, a big washer, then the little washer, little washer, then the bearing, then another little washer, then the upright. You know all of so you can look at that and tell exactly. And I do this. I do the same thing in the video. I'm telling you. Put this one here, but then next one, then this one, then this one. Is he possibly asking how to insert the washer into the block, into the space for the bearing? Just use a piece of wood and a hammer and to press fit the washer in. Talking about, I just, I just oh, used yeah, the clamp. Bearings and wheels, various sex. Yeah, you just. Maybe by wheels he means bearings. Uh, now, nah. okay, or, well, he's or, talking or, about bearing. It's all a, it's all a, a uh, pressure fit. Uh, so yeah, but you don't want to beat on the bearing. You want to take no. a block of wood or something. And again, I'm showing all this stuff in the video. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's why I guess I have trouble understanding some of these questions because I'm, I can't figure out why they, why they're asking. Well, it can't be that because I show that in the video. You know. 
So, all right. So I hope we, uh, let's see. There's another one here, I think. Mm -hmm. Hey, Dave. Yeah. Hold yes, on. Clyde. Uh, Clyde, Clyde asked a question about, uh, yes, you do need the small washer against the bearing, Clyde. Because yeah. if not, if not the big washer it hits against the uh, top of the bearing, and you don't want that, you want it to roll yeah. against the bot the, the and the again inside that's of the bearing. Clearly shown in the drawings, mm -hmm. and if you don't see it in the drawings, and you put the big washer on first next to the bearing, you'll find out really quick when you tighten it up that the, now the damn bearing won't turn. Right, so, and yeah. that and that was another reason why. I shoot myself in the foot going Home Depot because the washer sizes are not the same. They're not the same as the 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 Mac, yeah. the McMaster car, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I I gave up a, a long time ago. I used to tell folks, you know, quit worrying about nickel and dimes. Go ahead and spend a little more and get it at McMaster. And people just are so gung ho on on spending a nickel less for something than that I just give up trying to tell them that. But I'm like, go ahead and go somewhere else. And when you have to go oh, buy it a second time. Clyde, Clyde wasn't asking. He saw it in the drawing. He was saying, well, oh, and Jim, was, Jerry says for $6,600, he'll come out there and build it for you. <laughs> I was told by somebody with a mustache to go to Home Depot. So, I'm not going to mention any names, Mark, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a, a mustache. Yeah. Well, maybe I'm, I'm going to defend him a little bit. Maybe he went to McMaster and printed out the drawing of that washer so that then the hardware store. So nope. I don't know. Nope. nope. It, I look, it, they do not have the same washers. Yeah. <laughs> they may have the same hole. The width of the, the size of the washer. That was, that was the thing. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, Dave, uh, you might mention the uh, Gatton uh, map, too, if somebody needed to uh, touch base with somebody that might be close to them to see it or yeah, do a shop yeah. visit. I tell you, the uh, <laughs> I hate to sound like I'm just on here griping all the time the whole night, but sometimes that map gets to be a, a pain in the butt for me as well. Because uh, I get people emailing me now. I, I had somebody email me the other day, and he's like, well, I'm I'm around so and so, and I looked at the map. I can't believe there's only one over here by me, you know. And I, and I'm like, the map is for people that want to be on the map. That's not everybody out there. I'm not, and, and who have built the machine, and have built the machine. <laughs> yeah, just because you buy one, you don't get on the map. You got to have built it. It's for Pictures. the true Gatineers, the people. Video or it didn't happen. Built a machine. Not one to just buy one that's sitting somewhere in the box. Uh, that don't that won't get you on the map. But but again, because of the privacy thing, I told people, hey, I can do the map again, but I'm only going to put you on there if you want to be on there, and you know, and also let me know if you're willing to have somebody come to your shop and and look at your machine. You don't have to if you don't want to. But but I'm not just every time somebody buys them. Uh, thing i'm not automatically throwing them on the map there's a whole lot more folks out there than what's on that map so that's that all right yep. what i know i've already been on here about an hour and a half we need to get get off of here yeah there is a it says dave what do you do for a living this is it yep <laughs> I now this it. is it yeah. i fuss it people <laughs> no, I used to, uh, I used to, uh, work, you know, do 3d modeling. Well, Machinist. back in the day, I, I used to run equipment. I, you know, I'm a grunt I used to work out in the shop. That's where I got all my, all my learnings as they would say. Uh, and, uh, you know, taught myself CAD and, and learn how to do things. And, and that's how, that's how you learn how to design stuff good is because, when I design something, I think like the guy out in the shop instead of a stupid engineer. Sorry to all the engineers out there. <laughs> hey! But, see, Cut I, that I, out. I even get mad if somebody calls me an engineer. I'm like, no, I'm not an engineer. I'm just a guy who designs stuff. Uh, but, you know, you because I've been on the other side of the fence. I've been that guy out in the shop, 
and the engineer brings us out and says, here, I need you to do this. And you look at it and you go, well, there's no way that's going to work. And they think, well, it don't matter. You know, and you, so you do it anyway and you have to prove to them that it won't work, but you already know because you do it every day. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, for about the last uh, little over, what, three and a half years now, I guess, whoever that was that asked me that question, this is what I do for a living. That was 11 Atlantica. Yep. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And I think, I think that's Dean, if I'm not mistaken, he, he, he hides here on YouTube, but I think his name is Dean. Yeah. Post your name. If you've got a funky, uh, yeah, we don't, we don't like, we don't like anon anonymity. Yeah. I don't. Uh, and by the way, uh, you know, I always in encourage folks to join the, the different Facebook groups, the Gatton CNC and the garage work. But, um, if you ask to join, you got, you got to have a name, a real name, first and last name. I don't let Joe's workshop into the group. You know, we're all, we're all grown ups. We all, you know, we're all big boys. We go by first and last name there. It's because I know anytime I'm seeing somebody ask a question, I want to know who the heck I'm talking to. So, um, <clears throat> No uh, usernames or anything like that are allowed in that. So, all righty. Uh, They're all joking about. Uh, uh, yeah, I know, I, I, after I said, it, I thought, yeah, Jared's probably gonna get mad. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, Steve and uh, Steve and uh, Neilan and Jerry are joking about uh, not of about how far their machines are out of the box. <laughs> Yeah. And Patrick yeah. should be in on this conversation as well. Yeah. You notice <laughs> neither one of those are on the map, by the way. You got it to be a true Gatineer, you got to have it out of the box and put together and running. Oh. You'll have a lot of fun when you do. Yeah. All right. We're going to wrap this up. We've been on here about an hour and a half or so. Uh, again, um, this ain't rocket science, folks. Um, I, I get I get so frustrated because I see people every time uh, or a lot of times anyway, make things harder than they need to be. And I have gone out of my way for years now doing videos and designs and giving free plans away and all this different kind of stuff to help people and show them that it's not rocket science. And no matter what you do, there's somebody that's going to try to figure out how to reinvent the wheel. And you just don't have to do that. It's, it's, you know, you just don't have to, it should be, this should be fun. It should be fun for everybody. I want it to be fun. I want everybody to enjoy their, uh, Gat and CNC. I know the three guys I got on here with me tonight. I know they do. Um, uh, so yep. I love it. Know, it doesn't, uh, it shouldn't be like a job. Nobody wants, nobody wants a stinking job. It shouldn't be like a job. Just just have fun. Uh, we got a great group. We got over a thousand, uh, what a thousand fifty some odd folks, I think, on the Facebook group now. So there's tons of help out there. Um, I I know it's well over a thousand. How many Gattons yeah. have you sold in the in the last? Uh, all of them. I keep I, telling all, you, all of them. All of them. That's how it's many I sold. Um. I, I'd be curious to see the percentage of built versus bought. <clears throat> Probably. Yeah. 50, that's 50. a whole nother story. That's a whole nother story. Uh, I'd like, I'd like to know that too. I, I, I do know there's a lot of, a lot of them. In fact, that's why I don't give them away anymore. I've gave away so many of them and they never get built. Yeah. You know, for one reason or another, maybe they will one day. And if they do, that's great. But I'm like, you know, I'm not going to give any more. Well, away. with the with the low price point, relatively speaking, compared to the rest of the machine, and for for the effort you did with the plans, it's there's no there's no point. That's well, that's why that's why you don't have a problem. That's why you don't have a problem with privacy with piracy or anything like that because it, it, it's, it's like this, Javi. If I if I announced right now that I was going to do a giveaway next Friday and give away a CNC kit, I'd have who knows how many entries for the yeah. drawing 
but it's people who have no intention of building a kit anyway. They just, yeah. oh, it's something free. They'll get it. Mm -hmm. But if they spend their money. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer that raffle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if people will spend their money, they're not going to spend money unless they really want to do something. Yep. Yep. So, although I have, I have been surprised. I had a guy the other day, I don't remember his name, but uh, he had he had bought a kit almost two years ago, and then something come up, and you know things got happen, and, and then a computer crash, you know the old computer crash thing, and he, you know and he wanted to plan, so I had to go back and verify, you know, because anybody could say, yeah, I bought one, you know, so I always check, verify, make sure, and I'm like, yeah. It's found him from a couple of years ago and then, and then sent him the plans. But that's another thing. That's a real pet peeve of mine. People, if you buy these plans, think about, think about what you're doing for a second. You're spending money to buy those plans. So even though there are some files on your computer, that's money sitting on your computer. Mm -hmm. And I'm just amazed at the people that two, three, Years later, will email me and go, man, I never did build that, but I want to build it now, and I can't find those files. <laughs> well, guess what? I ain't your dadgum cloud. I'm going to start charging people that, that you know, <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. I'm going to it's start true. Charging, hey, 25 bucks, I'll send them to you again. But it's not my job to be your cloud <laughs> and, and save all this stuff. But what happens if I lose them? You know, I've got copies of them. All kinds of stuff, so I'm not in danger of, of, of losing them. But be smart, people. You, you spend. Yeah, money. Jerry. Jerry. Jerry just said, "Wait, I got the kit, but no plans." You just want me to figure it out? It's true with the with the kit, and no plans with the build videos. It's, there's not much to figure out either. I get I get people all the time too that because here's the way I do things, folks. When somebody buys the plans, and y'all y'all that already got them know this, mm -hmm. but. When somebody orders the plans, when I ship their kit, I take it to the UPS store and I ship it. They give me the copy of the tracking number. I come right home. I get on a computer. I send them an email and say, your, your order is shipped. Here's the UPS tracking number. Here's the estimated day it's going to be delivered. And, and attached to that email are your plans. Mm -hmm. And I get people all the time, man, the, the kit came, but I didn't get plans. Where's plans at? Mm -hmm. like, Read. <laughs> it's, the first, it's the first few words in the email. Your order has shipped and the plans are attached. It's right there. The first, first sentence. So I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you get, and, and, and one thing that we point out every time is that it's not just the plans and it's not just the kit. It's the entire community that, that you have access to. Uh, I mean, from, from all the help and assistance to, to, Hey, how do I do this? Well, you've got a thousand people that have built the thing. Ask one, ask one of us. We'll be happy to answer it. Yeah, it's uh I I always say it best best tech support team in the business cuz they're a thousand strong or so right there on the Facebook group. I think we got a thousand uh, th thousand fifty something, maybe 60 now cuz we keep getting more people all the time. But uh yeah, always always somebody I I very seldom you see somebody post a question on there and they don't get any response. Yeah. yeah, I've given advice from VFD settings to, I mean, I, I, I stayed on with, with, with one individual and gave them every single, there's a 250 different settings, and I went through each and every single one, even though they only needed 10, but but they asked. I, w I had the time at the time, you know, but everything to to opinions on, on what stepper motors to use and yeah, what I'm gonna I'm gonna find that magic button. We're gonna get out of here. We've been on here an hour and forty five yeah. minutes or so. Um, thanks everybody. We've had a really good crowd over here. Um, still got a really good crowd over here. But we're gonna get out of here. I hope we got some of your questions answered. 
Um, again, to all you know, all you new guys out there, the, the brand new guys, slow down, take a deep breath, read the plans, read the website, watch the videos. When you get done with all that, do it all again. And you're going to find that all the stuff we're talking about and we're getting, that I've been getting frustrated about tonight, it's all there. It's all right. There. Um, and I know this because hundreds of other people have built these things um, before. So you're, you're not, you, you may be a brand new person, but you're not the first one to, to build one of these things. So, and you're not the first and you won't be the last to ask any of these questions that we've answered That's true tonight. Too. Yeah, so don't feel <laughs> don't feel like oh I, I want to ask a question but it's so stupid I, I don't I don't want to ask it. You might as well ask da it. Dave will bark at you. We'll say yeah before I guarantee you. Dave 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 will bark at you. He'll say yeah and I'll say it's stupid but we'll answer the question anyway and we'll go on answering. Yeah, and then next week we'll answer it again. It's a question again. <laughs> Uh, that's what we do here. We just we're just a revolving door, because what, I mean, you think about it. The people buy the kit, they're brand new. They they build it and they start learning about CNC and they get in the community and they get. Then after a, a year or two, maybe three, they get good and they're like, "Well, I don't have to watch the CNC with Dave show because I'm not learning anything new." So they don't. They're not here anymore. Uh, it's always a constant thing of new names, new people. And then they get experienced and, and they go on the bigger and better things. Yeah. This is, you know, this is how it is. This is a, a few of us, a few questions. of us hang out, a few we, of us hang out for the community, but most move on to the next step, yeah. I mean, to, you know, or to all, the next all hobby. The, all of, if you go <laughs> back and look at the, the CNC with Dave shows from the very beginning and you look every few months, you're like, well, they just did that a couple of months ago or three months ago or six months ago. But it's we just keep doing them because it's a new batch of people uh, that that weren't around when we were talking about it six months ago. So uh, anyhow, all right. Thanks, guys. We're going to uh, get out of here. Thanks, Javi. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Miter Mike. Um, we're going to get out of here. Y'all have a good one. Keep posting those questions in the Facebook. And remember, if you got a, you need a one-on-one -on -one thing or a small group, whatever, don't forget about we can use a StreamYard to, uh, to do it. So mm -hmm. that's it. We are out of here, folks. Good night. See y'all.